Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a coolie lampshade just like this one using one of our shade carrier systems. So this is from one of our range of creative kits um, and the coolie lampshade is called so because it's reminiscent of a Chinese coolie hat which traditionally was narrower at the top and then wider at the brim. Um, so you can see the shape here. It's a really modern contemporary shade. Looks lovely in any home. It can be used on a table lamp as we have it here. It can also be used on a floor lamp, so in a kind of standard lamp way, and it can also be used as a pendant lamp. So really versatile. So let's just have a little look and see what's inside our box. So the box is nice and compact as you can see here and we have a 30 centimetre and it also comes in a 45 centimetre. Um, inside of the box, first of all, you'll see that you have your two rings. So you have your plain ring which sits at the bottom of the shade, creating the opening. And then you have your duplex ring which sits at the top of the shade. And the way that this connects with the shade carrier system is simply the duplex ring, the bottom smaller one, just sits on top of the shade carrier system like so. So what that does is it makes it really easy if you want to take your shade off to do some cleaning or you want to change your bulb. But what it also allows you to do, and I can just show you these two here, is that you can get these in different heights. Um, so you can then have a different distance on the bottom of your back, the base, your, your lampshade, um, to the base. So you can make those higher or lower, depending on what kind of look you're looking for in your room. So just let me show you here. You can just see, I can just lift that one off. And this is quite a short shade carrier here. So it just means that you can see that, that the base of the lampshade is actually quite close to the lampshade base and you can see how easily that goes on and off. We also have your lampshade um, PVC. Now this is a really high quality professional lampshade making PVC and it's self adhesive as well. So just let me show you the one I have here flat ready to make up our sample. Um, so you can see that it's white on one side, it's anti-yellowing anti-static and it's also been tested at the Lighting Association Labs. It's also been tested for fire resistancy as well. So from a safety point of view, you know that you're using a really high quality product. Now on the reverse side, you can see it's got a backing paper and that's going to be peeled back and then the PVC is actually self-adhesive. Something else to just note about this is along the lines here, along the edges, you have something called a kiss cut. And it's like a score on the, the actual PVC. And what that does, it means that you have a margin of fabric, which we're then gonna tuck very neatly underneath the bottom and the top of the shade. So really all the hard work is done for you um, and should make this kit really simple and easy to use and to put together. So what else is in your box? We've got some of the double-sided high-tack tape. It's flexible, transparent, and it's also very, very tacky. And we're going to use that to apply to our rings to then attach our shade and pull the whole thing together. And we also have a finishing tool. And this finishing tool has uh, two straight, sharpish sides and a sharp point and also a serrated edge. And if I just take this shade off here, you can see that that's going to help us tuck all of the fabric underneath the frame to give a really lovely professional finish. Also, as with all of our kits, you get an instruction sheet and this is photo pictorial, so really easy to follow as you go through, making sure that you're covering every step to a really professional shade. So let me just pop this to one side. So all you're going to need at home to be able to make the Cooley lampshade kit is a clean flat surface, a pair of scissors, um, fabric scissors work great for this because they're nice and sharp, or alternatively, you can use a craft knife. If you are using a craft knife, just be careful that you've got a cutting mat 
or something to protect your tabletop that you're cutting on. I always just have a separate little pair of scissors to cut my tape and then an optional extra is to use a seam roller and I'll show you where that can come in handy. In terms of fabrics to use for this product, you're looking for a fabric which is woven. So something like a lightweight cotton, a medium weight cotton would work equally as well. Something like a linen would be great. Just something to avoid is stretch fabrics because it doesn't particularly work well with the sticky on the back of your PVC and it will stretch out of shape and it just won't leave you with the professional product that you're looking for. So this particular fabric has got an all over pattern on. I would just avoid anything with straight lines going across because as you can see when you lay down your PVC that we're going to get a curve around here to get our finished product and you can see how this will fold into shape so anything with a line on will automatically go out of shape so something with an all over or a plane would be brilliant for this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my fabric over there we go and make sure that your fabric is really well pressed as well because you don't want any creases in that will show up on your final lampshade so you want to have your um, your fabric face down and then you need to have your backing paper also face down because we're going to peel that away and then we just need to position this where we want want it to be on the fabric and the first stage is to just simply peel back the backing and around about five to ten centimeters should be absolutely fine for this and then we're just going to position that onto the fabric and just use the base of your fist to push that into place. We're just going to pull that away a little bit. So just using your other hand, just simply pull back. And you can pull back kind of 20 centimetres at a time. And just smooth down each time you pull back. And that should be securing that onto there really nicely. So there we go, we're nearly done and that's it. So the self-adhesive on the back of the PVC has done its job there and all I do is I just flip it over, make sure there's no stray strands of cotton stuck underneath there and there's nothing, no lumps or bumps and that's absolutely perfect. So all we need to do now is take our scissors or craft knife if you prefer and we're just going to cut this out. So the easiest I find is to start on the short length and all we're going to do is just run the scissors up close to the edge of the PVC and then just cut into the, sh the short curve which is the top of the shade and just turning slightly the PVC round as you cut. If you do find this tricky, the other way to do it is to just simply come in from the other side and kind of meet halfway. And this edge here isn't ever going to be seen. We're going to use this fabric margin just to tuck underneath to give us that professional finish on the shade. So if there are any little kind of rough edges, don't worry too much about it. And then just down the other short side. And then round the longer curve. And what a lovely thing about this product is as well is that you don't have to do any measuring at all. So everything's calculated for you. Because it is quite a tricky shape of shades so it's all done and it just makes it really simple to put together. There we go. Fantastic. So now you can see that that's already coming together really nicely. 
So just before we finish with our panel, there's two things we need to do. One is we're just going to remove the kiss cut. So you can hear the cracks there. We're just going to snap this back, but just be gentle. Don't um, bend your main piece of PVC too much and it should snap open quite easily. And then all we're going to do is that's already lifting is move that away from the fabric. And as you can see, that's created a nice wide margin which is calculated for you. And exactly the same on the outside. There we go. I'm just going to do the same again. Just lift that up. And you can see there, there's a few frays pulling back. That's not really too much of a problem, but what you want to avoid is too much fraying. So just take it really gently as you pull that away. Okay. And I'm just going to snip away those frays so they don't get in our way later on. Okay. So the final thing we need to do now to prepare the panel is if you take your double-sided sticky tape, and you're just simply going to run a line just along the edge here on one side. And you just need to make sure that it's on the PVC as near to the edge as possible. And I'm just going to take my scissors for my tape. Great. So that's our panel all ready and prepared. So you can see how kind of quick and easy that is. So moving on to our rings now, we now need to just prepare these. So simply take your double-sided tape and just pop it onto the ring. And you want to make sure that the ring is between the two edges of the tape. So we're just looking for it to be centered. And the reason for this is, is because we're going to wrap the tape around the ring shortly. And we just want to make sure it gets as much coverage as possible. So I usually just do short, sharp bursts. And just before you get to the end, rather than overlapping the tapes, I just usually cut just slightly before. There's two reasons. One is that it means you can see where the join is. Um, and the other is, is if they overlap, it can be quite difficult to then take the backing off. And this bit's quite important. So with your fingers and your thumb, we're just going to literally push down and round and this is where we're wrapping the sticky tape now the double-sided tape around the ring there we go so that's that one complete and now we just move on to this ring so with this ring you just need to be a little bit careful we're actually going to put the tape around the bigger ring not the smaller ring because this is the part that connects onto here so it's just this top ring that we're going to do so take your tape and you just simply apply that in the same way. And because you've already done the bigger ring, you'll be practiced already. So you just apply that round. And again, I'm just going to leave a little gap to help myself there. And then again, just rolling with fingers and thumbs, just rolling the tape around. So we're going to make that ring as sticky as possible. Great. So we're now ready to move on to the next stage, which is actually rolling the rings. So on this shade, there's only one way the rings can go, which this will sit at the top here and this one will sit at the bottom. So first of all, take the backing tape off the top ring. When you're doing this, just be careful you only peel the red backing away, because um, sometimes you can grab the clear tape underneath. So to set this aside, we do the small ring first because it can stand on the base there, and it just makes it really easy. So we're just going to set that to one side, because once we've taken the backing off this one, then we're going to be ready to roll our rings. So. The small one first works well. And then with this, we're going to position these now onto the PVC. So 
I usually start with a smaller ring and what I also make sure is these have bars on. So make sure that the bars between the two rings don't sit here on the seam because it just makes it a bit tricky at the very end stage when we're tucking all the fabrics in. So if you make sure it's on the open section in between and it needs to sit on the PVC, not on the fabric. And then this one needs to sit on the other side. So just position that on. And what I found with this shade is it's very easy to do if you just lean them slightly because that's the shape of the shade. So we're just going to roll round and again rings on the PVC and I just tend to have a look at one and then just make sure the other one's following the line. And you can see how I'm kind of rolling those on an angle. But what that's doing is it's catching exactly the right point. So don't press down too hard at this stage because then it means that the final stage of tucking the fabric in is a little bit easier. So you can just do it basically so the tape is attaching to the PVC. And if you do go wrong, you can hear that noise, just pull it back and just reset it on its course again. So just making sure, there we go, and that's going round lovely. And just before you get to the point where you're going to meet with your seam, you just simply peel back the red backing tape again. And then I just bring these together kind of by hand here, rather than continuing rolling and just making sure that the overlap sits in the right place. And then just very gently, just close this up. Don't push here, don't put a lot of pressure on because you don't want to dent the PVC. And this is where your seam roller can come in really handy. So we can literally take your seam roller and just put a bit of pressure on because we're using the surface underneath to help flatten that down and make sure it's stuck together really well. Okay, so now it's starting to look like a lampshade. So just before we do anything else, we've just got a little overlap here of fabric between where the, uh, the two seams overlap. We just want to cut a little square of that away. So we're just simply going to cut down and cut across. And what that does is it just removes any bulk. And we're just going to repeat that on the opposite side. So you can see there, just overlap slightly. We're just going to cut the excess away. Okay. And now we just need to take, again, fingers and thumbs and just push the fabric over the edge. And what this does is it prepares us for the next stage, but it also gives us a beautiful crisp edge here. There we go. So we're all the way round to our seam. And I tend to use the seam as the starting point for every section. So starting at the inside seam there. And when you reach a spoke here, all you need to do is just snip in. And the fabric should just simply sit back on each side. So same again, just push the fabric round and snip in. And then same again. Just keep moving around. There we go. So we're now at the stage where we're ready to start tucking our fabric underneath. And this is where we use our finishing tool. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the demonstration, we've got two long sharp edges and then a point and then a serrated edge. And what we're going to do with this is we're simply going to use it to tuck the fabric underneath the frame. So I'm just going to lay this down on its side here so you can see. And all we do, I personally prefer using the point. We're just simply going to tuck the fabric underneath and you can see that's going in nice and easily and that's because we didn't put too much pressure on our rings as we were rolling. We're just going to keep moving down and it's good to start on the wider end, on the open end because it just means that you just 
get the knack of doing this. So all going over really easy. And any loose ends you've got, just sweep around. So that's one side done already. And then for this side, we just need to go in from the top. So again, I usually start at the seam, which is just here. So just on the inside seam. And this is just a tiny bit more tricky just because of the aperture that's open there. But as you get to those spokes that you've cut, they should very nicely tuck in on each side. So just pop your point underneath. And that cracking sound that you can kind of hear is just the tape just releasing from the PVC there. So just... And if they won't go all the way around the spokes, I'm just going to go back to them in a second. There we go. And if at any point this becomes a little bit bent, you can just simply take your scissors and cut it to a new point, which is great. So just for the spokes, you can go in from this side. And also just for catching any little loose ends, There we go, and it just means that I can just get my hand in now to do that. There we go, and that's all in. So here we have it, the finished coolie lampshade, and I think you'll agree that looks just as good as anything that you could buy on the high street, except this time you can make it yourself, and your own choice of fabrics to really personalise your home. So working with the shade carrier system, you can actually see, if I just remove that one there, really really lovely as a table lamp or as a floor lamp and you can also work that with the spider for your pendant lamp and that will just simply hang off your light fitting that you have at home so a really really lovely product i hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration and i hope that we've inspired you to make things for your home for yourself maybe for family or friends as gifts or even to start up your own small business making lampshades. Thank you.